Hello, Gary Steerman. Time for another Prophecy in the News Daily Update. It's Wednesday, the 19th of September. This is the third day of the Days of Awe, which began on Monday with the first of Tishri. Uh, today is the third of Tishri. Jews observe this as the fast of Gadaliah. Uh, in fact, it is a day of fasting for many Jews. And of course, we are proceeding on uh, through the days of awe to the 26th of September, which will be the 10th of Tishri, uh, and that is Yom Kippur. <clears throat> and I thought I would talk about a couple of things that remind me of, of the Yom Kippur War of 1973. First of all, to review, Egypt, uh, at the beginning of the month of September, uh, began to confront Israel with basically 6,000 Islamists on Israel's southern border. Uh, they constitute an Egyptian militia, and uh, uh, they are actually proliferating throughout the Sinai region uh, and have been for the last two or three weeks. And as this is going on, there's a mass, massive naval buildup in the Persian Gulf. <clears throat> Israel is moving closer and closer to war. From Israel today, Western powers and several, several of their Middle East allies have deployed an enormous naval fleet to the Persian Gulf just days after Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu again suggested that his country may soon launch a preemptive strike against Iran's nuclear facilities. Well, we uh, have already spoken about <clears throat> the naval armada, but uh, I just wanted to keep that in your mind. It's still going on. The Armada is still being strengthened, and we are proceeding daily toward war. <clears throat> and it's very interesting to me that this is happening during the days of awe in the Jewish calendar. Uh, I'm not setting dates <clears throat> or naming dates, but it is an amazing coincidence that as we are proceeding through the 10 days of awe, we are seeing an enormous uh, military buildup. And of course, the days of awe culminate <clears throat> with the Yom Kippur uh, fast, which is the, the most sacred and the holiest fast in uh, the Jewish calendar. We read about it in Leviticus uh, 23, 26. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement, uh, it shall be a holy convocation unto you, and you shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. You shall do no work that same day, for it is a day of atonement, to make an atonement for you uh, before the Lord your God. And so it is a time of personal affliction. Uh, it is a day of atonement or covering uh, in the days of the tabernacle, in the days of the temple of Solomon, uh, uh, and the second temple, the Day of Atonement, was marked by the entry of the high priest into the Holy of Holies with a blood sacrifice offered annually to cover the sins of the people. Now, atonement comes from a, uh, a Hebrew word that means to cover. Uh, Yom Kippur, uh, which we translate as the Day of Atonement, is Yom Kippur. Kippur, that is the day of covering, the day of covering uh, the sins of the people. It's an annual covering. It is not a full and complete redemption, which of course came only later uh, through the blood sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. But on this day, <clears throat> Israel, modern Israel as we think of Israel, was almost destroyed. Uh, October 6th through the 25th uh, in the year 1973 marked uh, almost a two-week war between Israel and a coalition of nations. Egypt, Syria, Jordan, and others gathered uh, against Israel with the idea of wiping Israel off the map. And it's uh, remembered by us as the Yom Kippur War since the war was initiated on the holiest day of the year, a day of fasting and prayer, when even... Uh, the Israeli military would basically be uh, at minimal station. And so it, it was judged by this coalition of nations, Egypt, Syria, and others, that uh, Israel would be vulnerable on Yom Kippur. Well, 
It's interesting to me that now with all the military buildup, we're coming to another Yom Kippur uh, in the year 2012. I don't know what will happen, but Yom Kippur is a day of affliction. To continue in Scripture, verse 29 of Leviticus 23, For whatsoever soul it shall be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from, from among his people. In other words, this is a time of great and serious uh, introspection, uh, fasting, prayer, affliction. Verse 30, And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. In other words, you're not supposed to do any work at all. Technically, not even military defense, which is why the enemy chose Yom Kippur in 1973 to launch that, uh, that great attack. Verse 31, you shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. Verse 32, it shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and you shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even, that is, on the eve of the tenth. Even from even to even shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. And so Yom Kippur is a holy Sabbath, a day of personal affliction. <clears throat> and as we lead up to this, we are discovering that Israel is preparing for war. From Deb Gefile, today as I make this, earlier in this day, September 19th, uh, the Israeli army launched a, uh, a major uh, maneuver, which only comes rarely when they have been known to be preparing for dire consequences. Tens of thousands of Israeli troops in a what was called a surprise Golan drill. <clears throat> Reservists drafted at no notice. Air Force, Central Command, and other IDF units were flown to Israel's northern Golan border early Wednesday, that's today, September 19th, for a surprise exercise called by the Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Benny Gantz under the code name National Asset. The official IDF announcement tried to downplay its support, its importance, describing it as a planned routine event. Well, not really. <clears throat> However, uh, the report states, uh, and military sources state, that the war game is the biggest war game since the IDF has uh, uh, been conducting these in, in the recent years. It's the biggest one in the last eight years, at least, since the Second Lebanon War on Hezbollah in 2006. Literally tens of thousands of soldiers and senior officers, including artillery and Air Force, took part in national asset, <clears throat> a uh, drill designed to determine uh, whether Israel is ready to go to war. It's not an exercise, but rather a readiness drill. Another sign of an impending conflict was provided by U.S. diplomats who Monday began destroying classified documents and sensitive equipment at the Beirut uh, embassy as Islamist uh, anti-U.S. violence raged across Arab and Muslim countries. The State Department says this was a, quote, precautionary measure without naming any specific threat. It looks like there is now uh, last-minute preparation for a Middle East war, uh, particularly when you've got a, a uh, full drill that tests Army and Air Force readiness in, to go to war in Israel. <clears throat> Again, the third day of the Days of Awe today, uh, September 19th, proceeding toward uh, Yom Kippur, which will happen on the 26th. So that's not very far away. Keep watching the Middle East. Some amazing things are happening there. Pray for Jerusalem. Pray for uh, national Israel. Uh, Bible prophecy uh, of course, places its hand of blessing upon national Israel in the latter days, and so should we. Gary Stearman, keep looking up. <laughs>